Hey guys, uh, here comes another factoring lesson. Uh, today we're going to be covering factoring trinomials when a is equal to 1. So we're going to be taking a step further from what we've been doing. Um, Monday we went ahead and talked about finding the greatest common factor. And then on Tuesday, we used our knowledge of finding the greatest common factor to go ahead and factor out the GCF of polynomials. Um, just to refresh that, um, looking at number one, there are two terms, right? 6n squared and 18n. And the GCF of both of them, and this is where you can go ahead and use mental math, the GCF of both of them is 6, because between 6 and 18, the largest number you can divide both of them by is 6. And I taught you guys a little trick yesterday, which was, well, if they both contain the same variable, right? So you take out the exponent with that's the smallest. So between n squared and n to the first, n would be the only one there, right? Now, if you can't use mental math, go back to Monday's notes and look how I went ahead and broke down everything to find the GCF of two or more terms, right? But for now, we're gonna move on and uh, assume that you guys know how to do it and you guys are able to use a little bit of mental math to figure out the GCF. So after we found the GCF, the directions said to go ahead and factor out completely, right? So we're gonna take that divide by 6n um, for the first term, and the second term, we're gonna divide by 6n as well, leaving us with n minus three, and whatever the GCF is, you're gonna put 6n onto here, and this was your final answer, right? But we're gonna take a take it a step further. So for number three, I want you guys to look at it right now. And for number three is, well, n squared plus 8n minus 20. There's no GCF right off the bat. So what do we do from here when there's no GCF? And we can't always write non-factorable or we can't say the GCF is prime. So we need to go ahead and look at the form and see what we can do. Now for number three, it's in a special form. This is going to be called the quadratic, that's a D, standard form. And the quadratic standard form is AX squared plus BX plus C, where the highest degree is a 2. And what this is going to actually produce, and you're going to learn this in uh, a week or two, which is that it's going to produce a U-shaped graph. Anything with a X highest degree of 2 is going to produce a U-shaped graph. But for now, don't worry about it. The only thing I want you guys to start practicing looking at when you see a quadratic function is I want you to start identifying your A, your B, and your C. Your A, B, and C. So in this case, your A is always going to go ahead and be in front of your, your variable that's power to 2. Your B is going to be in front of your variable that's power to 1. And your C is going to be in, it's going to be not attached to a variable. So looking at number 3, we can go ahead and identify it. So let's put an invisible 1. So your A is going to be 1. Your B is going to be 8 and your C is equal to negative 20. So since there's no GCF, since we're factoring a trinomial, basically um, it has three terms, we need to identify our A, B, and C. So very important stuff from here, all right? All right, so once we go ahead and identify our A, B, and C in our trinomial, we're gonna be doing um, a little puzzle, right? And this is very vital in terms of factoring trinomials. So what we're gonna do is, so for number three, after identifying our, well, let's go ahead. So that's number three. After identifying our A, B, and C, we're gonna go ahead and create an X puzzle, right? So we're gonna create an X puzzle, it's a big X, right? And we're gonna fill in the top and bottom part of the X. So that's gonna be a times C. And then the bottom is just going to be your B. All right, so on the very top is A times C, and the bottom is going to be your B. So we're gonna go ahead and fill in our values. So A times C, which is one times negative 20, that's gonna be negative 20. And my B value 
is going to be eight. Now, the X puzzle, everything is going to be filled. Everything's gonna be filled. So, so far we filled in the top and bottom numbers. Now we need to figure out how to fill in the left and right numbers. Now, to fill, fill out the left and right numbers, we need to figure out what times what will get me negative 20, but those two exact same values will add up to get me positive eight. So we need to do a little test run. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a little chart. What times what will get me negative 20, but adds up to get me positive eight. So let's do some adding right up here. So let's do this. So let's try it out. I have a couple values, so let's try negative five times four. That gets me negative 20, right? So that works out. So that works out. Now we gotta try to try it again with adding. So negative five plus four, that gets me negative one. Well, the, it's, those two numbers satisfy the top numbers, but it doesn't satisfy the bottom numbers. So we can't go ahead and do it. So let's try another set of numbers. Let's try to go ahead and do, let's go, let's go uh, negative 10 times two. Well, that gets me negative 20, right? Negative 20, which is a good thing. So let's do negative 10 plus two. Well, that gets me negative eight. So, I mean, they're both eights, but one's positive, one's negative, so we can't choose those numbers. So let's see if we can flip the signs. Let's go positive 10 times negative two. That nets me negative 20, which is good so far. And then I have 10 plus negative two, that gets me eight. So my two values are gonna go ahead and be negative two and positive 10. So it doesn't matter the left and right numbers, right, in, in the order, because I could put 10 first or negative two. I just need to figure out what two numbers satisfies to multiply to the top, but adds up to get to the very bottom. So after we go ahead and figure out what are the two numbers that fill up the left and right side of the X puzzle, we're gonna take those two numbers and write it down. So, I'm gonna go back to problem number three, right? Going back to problem number three. So I have n squared plus eight n minus 20, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop the first term down, n squared. Whatever my two terms are in factoring right over here, negative two and the 10, I'm gonna write negative two n, right? Always, whatever the two terms are, add the whatever variables that's in the problem, plus 10 n, and then I'm gonna drop down my C, which is gonna be negative 20, all right? So just to recap, once I fill in my left and right numbers of the X puzzle, that's gonna go in the middle of my polynomial. My my first term and my last term are gonna remain the same, all right? We're almost done, we're almost done, believe it or not. It's a lot of work, but we're almost done. What we're gonna do is we're gonna split the first and second term with the third and fourth term. So I'm gonna go ahead, draw my fence going across this way, and I'm gonna GCF the left side and the right side. So when I GCF the very first term, these two right over here, they both have N in common, so that's gonna be N, right? And then I'm gonna pull out the GCF n, and if I pull out an n each term, that'll be n minus two, okay? So this is just going straight to factoring the GCF out for the first and second term. Now I'm gonna do the same thing. These two right over here, the GCF of each one is 10, so I'm gonna pull out a 10, so that'll be plus 10, and if I divide both sides, both of them by 10, that'll be n minus two. So last thing we gotta do, is finish it up and clean it up. Because they both have n minus two in common, because they both have n minus two in common, so I'm gonna go ahead, write n minus two, and then whatever's left over on the outside of each one, that goes in the second set of parentheses. So that is gonna be your final answer. Your answer is gonna be n minus two, and then n, oh, I'm sorry, n, and that should be a plus, by the way, plus 10. Trust me, it's a long process initially, but when you do enough of these, you're gonna pick up on shortcuts, right? Let's do another one. 
Let's do another one. Let's go ahead and do number five. We're gonna move a little bit quicker, all right? So find out what your A, B, and C are. So your A is gonna be one, my B is gonna be negative 14, and my C is gonna be 45, all right? You're gonna create your X puzzle. I'm gonna create my X puzzle over here. And then so we said earlier that the top is gonna to be A times C, and the bottom is gonna be my B. Well, A times C, is going to go ahead and be 45 and my C is going to be negative 14 right and what we need to do is figure out okay what times what will get me 45 but adds up to negative 14 right pause the video real quick and see come up with the two numbers that multiply to get you 45 but adds up to negative 14 what you should have gotten was negative 9 and negative five. See, negative nine times negative five uh, multiplies to get you positive 45, and then negative nine plus negative five gets you negative 14. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take, take those terms and create your new one. So you drop down the very first term, x squared. This middle term is going to disappear with whatever these two are. So that's gonna be negative nine x minus five x and then you drop down the last term plus 45. when you're done with this you need to make sure you split it up with the fence so i'm going to split these two up right when I, and this is going to be a special case right this is going to be a special case what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and find the gcf of the first and um first and second term so the gcf of these two is going to be x so that'll be x x minus 9. Now, if your term for the third and fourth term ends up being a negative, right, what you need to do is you're going to factor out not only the GCF but the negative. So this one right over here, since that leads with the negative, I'm going to divide both the first and second term by negative 5. When I do that, that will be negative 5 parentheses x minus 9. If you do this correctly, and if you notice from the problem from number three to number five, the ones in the parentheses should look exactly like the same, leaving that to be x minus nine. And then whatever these two are, are that are left on the outside should be x minus five. And this should be your final answer, okay? I know a lot of this stuff is brand new. Um, I'm gonna do a couple more. And then I'm going to go ahead and let you guys practice on your own. All right, actually, let's just do one more. I'll go ahead and do problem number nine, right? Same exact thing. For number nine, identify your A, B, and C. So pause it right there. Try to identify your A, B, and C. What you should have gotten after repausing would be A is 1, B is negative 12, and then C is equal to 27. C is equal to 27. Okay, then you're gonna go ahead and create your X puzzle. All right, go back. Your A times C goes on the top, so that's gonna be 27, all right, in case you guys wanna know where I got that. My B is gonna be negative 12. Pause right now, figure out the left two numbers. What times what gets me 27, but adds up to negative 12? All right, pause it. All right, if you actually pause and tried it, you should have gotten negative nine and negative three. So when you do it, right, when you do it, you drop down your first term, so that'd be k squared. The middle term is gonna disappear with the terms that are over here, so that's gonna be k, that's be k, so that'd be minus nine k, minus three k, and then you bring down the last term, plus 27, plus 27. And if you do this correctly, you're gonna split these two up, and you should be able to factor it. Now, the first two terms, the GCF is K. I can take out a K in each of it. So that'll be K, parentheses, K minus nine. Again, alert, it's a special case. If that third term leads with the negative, you need to divide by not only the GCF, but a negative as well. So since the GCF between three and 27 is three, I'm gonna divide by negative three. So when I divide by negative three, I should have negative three K minus nine. Okay, again, this and this should be exactly the same. So when I do this, right, what they have in common is k minus nine, I'm gonna write down first. 
And then the last thing is that um, whatever is left on the outside, which is the K and negative three, that goes in the second set. Had you written K minus three times K minus nine, it's, it's exactly the same thing. As you guys can tell, it is a lot of work, but the minute you guys start learning the process, everything in this unit is going to be exactly like the same from today's unit. Um, if you're struggling, I highly recommend that you guys uh, schedule some hours with me on Friday before the quiz, especially from 9 to 10.25. We can do a bunch of these problems, um, and then we'll, we'll make sure that you're, you're very well prepared for the quiz. All right. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, I'm more than glad to help. Um, if you guys want me to check your process, email me a picture of you know a problem and I can see if you're doing it correctly. Um, the answer, sh answer should be on the very bottom of your assignment as well. Again, if you don't have the work that looks like this, I'm not going to give you credit. And moving forward, you're going to get a bunch of factoring stuff like this. If, if you can't master this, it's going to be a big struggle from here on out. So make sure you master it, taking it seriously, ask a bunch of questions, get all the help you can. All right, take care, guys. Stay safe.